What up guys, the Fighting Therapist here, and for today's video, we're gonna talk about your sciatic nerve. Now before we jump into the video guys, please give this video a thumbs up. Give me, you don't need to give me, but if you support me, can you please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you guys do know when these videos do come out. Without further ado, the disgusting pictures are on their way. So let's talk a little bit of the sciatic nerve, where it comes from, why sometimes you'll be experiencing some of these pains, some tenderness and everything like that. As you guys see here, okay, this right here, this blue thing is your sacrum. Okay, so this is where you have like your tailbone right here, and then you have your spinal cord right here. So, when it comes to the sciatic nerve, you have your lumbar plexus, which starts right around your lumbar spine, right? Anywhere between like L2, L1, L3, all those things, you're gonna have a branch of nerves coming down, and one of the biggest ones is your sciatic nerve. As we look at this document, we have this muscle right here in orange. This is called your piriformis muscle, right? I drew like a little picture right there. Now, this green part, these are all like your little nerve branches that are coming down. They're gonna go through that muscle and they're gonna come down and this is your sciatic nerve. Now, if we zoom in on this little image right here, which is right here in the corner, what happens is that your sciatic nerve is in a very small tight area passing through your piriformis and your sacrum. Now, sometimes this can get pinched, this can be blocked because the piriformis is either super tight or sometimes we can have a rotation in our sacrum, right? It can be faced that way, it can be down, it can be rotated the other way, face down. It really depends on imbalances, uh, glutes not functioning, tenderness, right, tightness, being placed in a position, right, from sitting all day, from working, the way we sit, the way we move, and a lot of the times, that stiffness that you create is gonna shorten and close in on that space and you're gonna get a lot of those symptoms. You're gonna get some numbing, you might get burning, tingling, it might go down just all the way to, let's say your butt, it might go down to your knee, it might go down to your tibia, and even in some cases I've had patients where it's went all the way down to their toes and between their fifth and third toe, it's actually completely numb and they don't feel anything. Now, not a good thing. Simple exercise that we can do to actually help this thing is going to be opening up that space, loosening up the muscles, flossing the nerve itself just to loosen the adhesions that might be there and these next exercises that i'm going to show you guys and share with you has been probably one of the best ones that i've tried that i've given to patients that i've done through my stage and that have actually worked now i'm not saying this is a fix a lot of times it'll depend on the person Different people have different reasons of why this might be happening. It could be due to just pelvic instability. It could be due to you being in a position. It could be due to just a muscle imbalance. Again, every person is different, but the main thing is you need to loosen up that space. You need to be able to move more. You need to be able to strengthen your glutes. And here are a couple of exercises you guys can be doing right now to kind of just help that overall scenario and kind of maybe just alleviate some of the pain. Maybe you're at a seven on 10, let's bring it down to a four. A three on a visual pain scale of like bringing it down is significant and this is what we want. So the first one is gonna be a simple piriformis stretch. Now, you yogis out there might have done the pigeon stretch. It's pretty much the same principle, but it's gonna be a piriformis stretch. So you're gonna come down into a figure four position, grab that leg, we're gonna use the outside elbow to open up our knee and we're gonna pull inwards, we're gonna breathe. The focus here is the breath, as well as pulling in as much as possible to really get that piriformis to stretch out and to relax. Right after you've done this one, we're gonna do a 90-90 position. I like this method a little bit more than the pigeon stretch because we're able to do PNF. Now, PNF activation is something that I will cover in another video if you don't know about it. Set the normal up. You had, you, you, you could, you. Proprioceptive neuromuscular felicitation. Wow, it's a mouthful to say. <laughs> I don't know, I can never say it, even in class. I know what it is, but I can't say it. About this exercise, it actually uses our nervous system to relax and contract different antagonist muscles. So what's great about this 90-90 position is that we can actually contract our glutes, our piriformis, and then get them to relax. And because we're using our nervous system here, we can actually allow our body to relax even more than just a static stretch. PNF is one of the best methods to actually gain flexibility. And when you use it in a normal protocol, you'll actually see greater flexibility gains in the long term. So this is why I love using the 99 position, because not only can I do agonist, antagonist, but I can also do 
agonist as well. So let's say if I were in that 99th position right now, what you see me doing is trying to squeeze or bring my knee down. That would be activating my glutes. And, but then I closer do the opposite where I put my hand on top of my knee, activate my internal rotators, get them to contract, which is gonna relax the external rotators. And then I can go further and bend further into position. The main thing here is try not to get a posterior tilt. You kind of want to maintain neutral spine and bend forward. That's going to give you the biggest stretch. Remember, we're trying to bend at the hip. We're not just trying to bend in our T-spine. Next exercise is going to be a glute med stretch. Now, if you haven't done this exercise before, the difference between stretching your glutes and your glute med is your glute med does a little bit of external rotation more than your glute max. You're going to want to slightly externally rotate your glute and then pull your leg across your body, as you see me doing in the video and you don't see my knee coming straight down, I'm really trying to maintain that position and pulling, you're gonna feel the difference from where the stretch is. So holding this position is gonna stretch out that glute meat a lot more. Next one is gonna be nerve flossing. I found this one to be a very effective way. The only thing that you wanna watch out for is if you're watching this video, as I'm coming up, I am pointing my toe upwards, dorsiflexion. I'm coming up, I'm putting a big stretch on the nervous, on, on the nerves pretty much on that posterior train with the hamstring and everything. And then when I'm coming down, I'm pointing my toe. You're gonna to feel it a lot on the front of your tibia. So like the tip ant area, your tibial nerve. And then you're gonna come down and you're gonna repeat that process back and forth, flossing the nerve and relieving a lot of those restrictions. Next one is going to be a posterior chain hamstring stretch. Now, a lot of people like to do the hurdler stretch or just the long leg sit. I find that that really doesn't target your hamstring as well as opposed to this exercise. So what you want to do is stand next to the wall. You're going to take two to three steps back. I like to do three steps back. In the video, I did two just because I didn't really fit in the camera the way my girlfriend was sitting. So you take three steps back. You put one leg forward. You're going to keep that anterior tilt in your back and you're going to bend at the hip. You're going to put your arms out. So really getting a huge stretch on our posterior chain there and really focusing the whole length and not just on the hamstring where a lot of people have a hard time sitting down and getting that anterior tilt. Everyone tends to be in a posterior tilt when they're doing that long leg sit or the hurdle stretch. So I don't really like it. And I found this one is actually more effective than the other ones. Next is going to be a strengthening exercise. Like I said, we want to release as much tension and adhesions as possible, but we also want to get the glutes firing. Now, this can be done so many ways. I just did a simple one, which is a glute bridge. The focus here is to keep that back flat, get that TVA activated, drive with the glutes and hamstrings working together. Now, the main driver of the exercise is going to be the glutes. If you feel that when your toes are down and just flat on the floor when you're driving up, you don't feel it as much, lift your toes up a little bit. You'll actually feel it in your glutes a little bit more. And the closer you bring your legs to you, the more you'll feel it in actually your glutes. As well, you can make this even harder. You can do single leg, you can add a band and add some external rotation when you're coming up. There's many different ways that you can actually adapt this exercise. And I have videos coming up on how to enhance it even more. So make sure you're subscribed so you guys can actually get all that content. That's pretty much a little protocol that you guys can actually start doing at home. If you have any questions, let me know down below. If you have any other symptoms or maybe you've tried some of these and not really working, let me know down below. I hope that helped. I hope this image gave you guys a little picture of what's going on inside and why you're probably getting some of these signs and symptoms. Without further ado, it's your boy, that's Zach. Catch you guys in the next video. Punch, headbutt, elbow, knee, peace.